Onyx is a company that can only essentially make money by selling the hardware itself. So in that respect, we don't blame them for the quick turnover. This is the Tab Ultra C Pro. This one features pretty much a little bit of everything, but the standout feature isn't the specs, it's actually the accessory that can go along with it. An optional keyboard cover with a trackpad. And we need to go over everything today. This could be a pretty lengthy review because we actually have to go over the build of three different things the trackpad, keyboard, the unit, and the pen. So let's start with the pen. The pen is the Pen 2 Pro that comes along with it. You'll see that it does have a segmented and separated body and eraser, and it does push in. This is how you erase, and it has a little thimble to keep the pen tip safe. It is a felt graphite composite tip that everyone in the industry uses. It's a fairly long pen. It's made out of aluminum. It has a good weight to it, and it snaps to the side. The case, with the trackpad keyboard is separate does not include with the unit does have a books logo right there leather appearance and it has a very nice and strong hinge it also has a magnet snap pogo pin attachment full-size keyboard without numpad of course and a trackpad that also clicks up and down all you would do is grab your unit like this you line up the camera bump snap it in snaps in with magnets close it up snap it closed and you have yourself a nice little package very very heavy at this point extremely heavy and we're gonna weigh everything right now with all the accessories and just the body alone everything including the pen stylus what are we sitting at for the full package let's get this nicely displayed this unit is coming in at 983 grams making it the heaviest full combined package of any e-reader or e-note we've ever reviewed that's almost a kilogram but with all this stuff out of the way the pen off and the case separate we are sitting at a total for the device body itself 450 which is pretty moderate finally the device body construction itself very nice weight overall as we said 450 it is an aluminum build and very chiseled around the edges it's almost like you're not supposed to really hold this a lot it's supposed to be in in that case or on the table you're taking notes because it's kind of jagged in your hand more so than a lot of devices we've seen typically e-notes are not so squared off you have volume buttons on the side you have a power button up top with a speaker all the fun stuff happens at the bottom here you have the other speaker you have an SD card with a nice little door and you have a USB-C over here are the six little pogo pins that line up with the keyboard and you have this fake Louis Vuitton esque looking strip of the repeating pattern of the company and you have a a huge camera bump that sits out several millimeters and is stacked almost like a three-tier pyramid with a flash package for scanning documents unsurprisingly with the tab ultra c and c pro because of that camera the device never sits flat you do have a camera bump on the corner so you need to rectify that by putting it in a case the overall ui is unchanged from a lot of their devices this is good and bad. It's good because it's familiar. You know where everything is. But it's bad because, well, you're spending 650 on this unit. I mean, is there something that really stands out aside from the optional case? Well, let's check it out. You have your drop down with your Bluetooth, your Wi Fi, all of your stuff right there. Now, when you get it out of the box, they actually keep the glow light on. And I'll show you that right now. With the glow light off, it doesn't look that great. Look at the white. Look at the white here, the white there, it's gray. Looks really gray, and that's because this is the problem with Kaleido. When you have Kaleido, you have to turn the glow light on a little bit to take that edge off. This isn't a cheat way to make it look better for any other reasons, but making it look better, because it just doesn't look good without the glow light on. Big Me is suffering from this, Pocketbook, High Read, Onyx, everyone, because that's how Kaleido 3 works. Over here, the e-ink center, this is your be all end all of kind of terminal optimization because this is where you're going to find your dark color enhancement, your vivid enhancement, your color brightness, and the speed modes. I love these speed modes. Onyx probably has the best overall speed mode spread. It's very even. It's very consistent. I love it. We'll show you that when we get into some videos. More settings. You can go further and do full refresh by count. 
animation filter time drag to refresh and you can do HD and regal only you'll see I have a navigation bar at the bottom you can change this in lieu of gestures I don't like the gestures I like the navigation bar that's just me you have your apps here you have your notes push read document scan we'll show you that later and all of your applications yes you have Google Play yes you can download literally any app on there and because this is running the latest Android for ePaper anything is gonna work Onyx also found a way to introduce Google Play out of the box, out of the box. It used to be kind of out of the box where you just clicked enable Google Play. Now it just works and it's pretty crazy, honestly. You do have the ability, as I said, to download anything and you can watch anything too because this does have several refresh modes, including ultra fast. You can just simply go through, watch videos, watch pictures. You can go over to apps. You can go to games. You can go to books. You can download literally anything. You could put Netflix on this, watch Netflix, download Facebook Messenger and have all your messages come in and just a full-blown tablet experience and we have to say that because a lot of you guys think this is still an e-reader e-reader devices have been very much split from e-notes they are extremely different nowadays they also have books which kind of eliminates the need to go to the onyx bookstore the onyx app store or even the amazon bookstore because you have google books right out of here you can get ebooks audiobooks manga all sorts of things and you can see because we're in japan manga gets prioritized and if you click on something you can simply just read a free sample and away it goes now you're not spending $649.99 to read books, but we have to look at it because we're a goody reader. With apps like Google Books, you will see that you have page turn animations. Now they kind of get in the way based on what mode you're on, Regal, Ultra Fast, Fast, HD Balance. If you're on Regal, you'll see that everything looks really good, but it's just, it's terribly slow, very, very slow. So this is where the e-ink center kind of comes into play. You want something like balanced or fast when you have page turn animations. Now you can peek and really kind of get the full use of it out of the way. Now you can do long presses and things like that, and you do have multiple colors. Yes, it is a color screen, of course, as you are watching this video, and you do take advantage of that by doing your highlights, by boxing a whole bunch via the anchors and making your highlights. So it's really nice in that regard. And of course, you can take full advantage of color art and any pictures that you find in line. So e-reading is quite nice, but you really can't do much about that Kaleido screen getting in the way. Regal with the glow light on a little bit is just about as good as it's ever going to look. Now for the mango. This is an included manga from Google Play, so we're just going to look at this. We're not going to sideload anything. And why we use Google Play, because it's got some nice features, honestly. It does look really nice with the color lead-in picture, and then you get into the actual black and white manga. But Google Play manga actually allows you to double-click a box, and what it does is it boosts that box of text so the text bubbles will come up right to the screen you can see they key themselves out I really like that feature I think it's really cool you can also zoom in entirely you'll see right there now there is no color on mangas because black and white is well that's what mangas are earmarked for they're always black and white graphic novels will be in color and we'll show you some color in some videos and some pictures later we're just showing you the manga experience because you guys always ask for it now you can see it's very choppy all that stuff we kind of touched on on the e-reading experience this can be mitigated with your speed modes when you do get into something ultra fast for example you'll see that although it's quick now it's staining a lot more and it just looks a little bit more fuzzy and that's because it's not prioritizing the best look it's prioritizing the speed of the unit you can see all the staining on the screen HD mode would be something you would want to sit in when the photo renders finally but it's not good on the in-between so that's where balance and fast comes into play but manga is perfectly fine on this although manga is quite big on this because manga is usually small in Japan they're these little tiny ones you get at the 7-eleven checkout counter at a bookstore they're around seven and a half inches we'll go over a lot of the features of course in notes but we'll focus on color as much as we can you'll see that you do get a ton of templates you get popular work study other custom and you can sideload in your own and you get some colored ones as well but for the most popular one we're just gonna go with blank white now on the side you'll see all these little red circles and that means there's an alert when you click on it it's gonna give you a prompt and say hey something's going on so you can just cancel all that and just kind of go back in between each one the beauty about an onyx device is they've taken a page out of the book of Fujitsu and they allow you to actually customize your pens so you can do a light blue 
fountain pen. You can do a ballpoint in gray. You can go over here and do maybe a pencil in black with a thick line and a nice dusting. Finally, we will go over here and customize maybe a highlighter with a red with a thick line. And you can toggle in between all of these on the fly. So let's write something out before we get into a lot of the features. No, I don't write that bad. I'm just burning on through it. To show you guys that you can toggle in between everything on the fly, eraser works as well. You can set the eraser to various things on the side right here. So you can go to mobile eraser, stroke eraser, lasso eraser, and erase all layers. Yes, layers is very useful as well. You can keep adding layers, total of five plus the base layer. How it works is that if you go to a layer and scribble over everything, you might think, oh no, I've ruined everything. Well, if you erase you're only affecting the layer you're actually working on unless you go over to here and choose the almighty erase all layers in which case it will get rid of everything shape is just crazy no one does shapes as good as onyx and they are the absolute best hands down reason being it would take you too long to write this in the real world for example if you're drafting and you need a square with a dotted line there's no way you could do those inconsistent dots consistently throughout the entire thing and say you want to go to an arrow and say hey Johnny I need you to look at this one and you make an arrow in a different color with a different line structure it's just insane all the shapes you can pause the video right here to see exactly what you get and you get the full 16 colors with the shape section and each of them have their own little color code something else really cool if we do full line with a circle for example and we go and do a circle here they have fill much like well Microsoft paint so you can go fill you can grab a color like orange or something click inside it and the entire thing will turn that color I really like that not a lot of manufacturers do that in fact I can't even think of one off the top of my head you have gesture which you can turn on or off which basically eliminates certain things like long press slide pinch to zoom etc you can choose if you want these on or off pinch to zoom for some reason on pdfs and books and notes and everything they always turn it off for you and i'm not sure why they do that it's always defaulted to off you do have more at the bottom as well with a bunch of different things share and export being my personal favorite reason being this just goes above and beyond companies like onyx like big me a bunch of others we can say they really do leave it to you to do whatever you want for example I'm gonna export this which I just drew my drafting and I'm gonna say share what it's gonna do is go through your entire device and see what you have installed on it and it's gonna ask you if you want to share it with that Gmail Outlook Microsoft WhatsApp line Facebook Messenger you can put them all on here and share exactly what you did so you can via email accept your notes sign your documents and send it without even using a printer which you can also use you can do network printing right from the device itself you don't need a cable or anything like that you have lasso tool as well lasso tool allows you to well lasso something and you can move it around you can stretch it you can change it you can rotate it you can copy it stamp it change the color undo redo anything you want you also get insert and they don't just allow you to insert a photo they do photo recording attachments link to note hyperlinks time stamps as well they take it to the next level when it comes to note taking finally we want to look at AI or a cursor they call it so you can change different things shape perfection which they took from basically eye reader lasso recognition strike through erase or text recognition I like text recognition because it's going to recognize the text and it does it in the way you write it as well you can also look at original and it'll do it right where you wrote it from there you can actually continue like that you can use the keyboard which it is a decent sized keyboard all things considered and you can actually write out your characters so if I do R R is going to show up they just really give you a lot of ways to just keep on working on this thing
because this is one of the few devices in our industry that has a camera, we are going to test it out. So what you would do is you would get some text. We're going to do it on this Barnes & Noble box. You simply click Next, and it's going to transcribe all of that text for you. You just click Next. It's going to read it out, and you can change it to a note to OCR to PDF. So we're going to do OCR. It's going to recognize everything and write it out for us. This is all going to come down to how clear everything was when you took a picture. It looks like it did it all right here, but there's some formatting issues, in which case you can tap into it and you can select it and edit it on a different application. This is giving you the ability to share anywhere you want or copy it over to a Word document. When you first put your device in the keyboard case, you'll get a ton of system shortcuts. You will have to kind of remember a lot of those if you don't know where the function keys are. It's pretty self-explanatory, aside from some things like search, split screen, and e-ink center, which isn't entirely self-explanatory, but you can always go and keep this on out of the box as per their recommendation and their kind of warning to us, you will see that the mouse is not very good. Those are the few things you're going to have to do before you can start using the mouse comfortably. And no, this isn't a slow shot. You can see my hand here. The mouse is just that slow. Switching into ultra fast immediately rectifies this and you now get a smooth mouse on the screen. But they told us to change this to 80% to get the best experience. This will be the first time you'll ever see the words mouse on the Onyx device lineup. It is under settings, more settings, and mouse. Here you have circle or arrow. We'll leave it on arrow. It's easier to see. And they said, go down here, pointer speed up to around 80%. This is going to be the best overall experience. I will already tell you that looks a lot better and feels way better. I know where I'm going. I can accurately go over there. It's just going to take a little bit of practice and muscle memory if it's different than the one you're using at your house. Whether you do a left click or a right click, it's going to be the same thing. So if I press the left side, it's going to click it like that. If I press the right side, it's going to do the same thing. It's basically, if you press down anywhere on the trackpad itself, it's going to trigger the same execution, which is choose trackpad gestures. We'll just cycle through these. You can go ahead and pause the video at any point in time if you want to see what they do. You can see they did do a great deal with the trackpad. They didn't just let it be a mouse. They actually have a ton of gesture support. Not only that, finally you can turn off the trackpad by toggling it right there. This will be your shortcut reminder. You have enable wake up the device with the keyboard, display virtual keyboard, and the keyboard layout at the very bottom. Yes, I am not the greatest in the world, but you get the idea. When you do go into the note section and you don't choose handwriting notes, you have the ability to take some notes using the keyboard. You can still use the on-screen keyboard, the virtual keyboard, but this allows you to get the job done with the keys down below. The key press is decent. It's not the most rewarding to press. It's not soft, but it's not that really clicky gamer mechanical cut chunk you get with those little scissor lift mechanisms under each individual key. But honestly, it's not the worst. It feels very sturdy as well. The keys don't shake. They're tooled very well. They're rounded and you never really lose track of where you are. And yes, the F and the J have the little nubs on them for orientation purposes. I must say very good job with the keyboard. I like the trackpad as well. It allows you to do things like a little bit of that familiarity with devices. I would say it's a little bit overkill for an e-paper device to have this, but you know, they are moving away from tablets. They even label this as an e-ink PC. Last thing before we're out of here is colors. Going back to the note taking section for a second to show this off. Colors on this unit is 
nice. They're very, very clear. They're crisp. Now, it's not going to look as good as Gallery. It's not going to look as good as Spectra because it can't. It can't possibly look as good as those. But this is not meant to. This is supposed to be usable. This is supposed to be a realistic level of color that you can use on a daily basis, which I believe it is. There's no sloshing in between the colors themselves. It is very concise as to what color is what. You get 16 to play with. A lot of them are grayscale, five of them in fact, but it is very good. There's not really any major drawback to Kaleido. In fact, K3 is currently the only technology that is even usable. Gallery 3 seems to be, well, we're the only guys along with Big Me that have even harnessed it. Pocketbook and Sharp are still having trouble with it. And then you have Spectra, which is just basically for large screen posters. And then over here you have DES, which essentially doesn't even exist as nothing is consumer available. Kaleido 3 is the only color in the industry. Pocketbook, High Read, Big Me, Guoyue, Everyone, Hisense, everyone's using Kaleido. Finally going to the e-ink center, going to HD mode, leaving everything at default, which is recommended 3000, and we're going to look at some images. This is about as good as it's going to get on any consumer available product. Kaleido 3 with a 10.3 inch. You don't really have a 13.3 inch to play with and anything really small is just too small. You can't really get the full picture both figuratively and literally. This is going to be the best color available. I love it. I think it's the blues show up well, the greens show up well, the gradients show up well, and a lot of manufacturers nowadays are introducing Grayscale 256 or IMG 256, which gives you the full gamut already embedded in the unit itself, so you don't really have to enable it after the fact. All thanks to iReader for even kicking off that train. I must say, job well done, K3. Nearly every imaginable feature, Google Play out of the box, standard, and a trackpad keyboard enabled optional accessory makes this unit one to keep your eyes locked onto. However, it is extremely expensive at $650 USD, the trackpad case is separate, and the previous tab Ultra C has been discontinued not even 365 days after it was released. Yes, e-notes and e-readers are getting more expensive, but they're also getting significantly better alongside. With this unit, it is a matter of getting what you pay for. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.